Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be using some of the knowledge we've learned in the previous videos and really sort of building on some actual real world uh, beneficial macros or scripts we say. Uh, so we're now actually going to be using something that was, you, you'll probably find great benefit using in your day to day role. Uh, and that actual feature is going to be copying data from one workbook into another. And I guess being more specific, um, obviously we're going to be writing this script into one of our workbooks and we're going to be obviously from that active or open workbook, we're going to be opening a second workbook copying out some desired information and then pasting it into our um, sort of our open workbook. We're going to cover off a couple of different ways of doing this um, from the very basic of just literally copying the data and pasting it in and also at the end of the video or towards the end of the video we'll be looking at how we can obviously you know make this a bit more technical uh, and be able to say okay we want to copy some dynamic data, so we need to go through that data and find out how many rows are within that data. And then also in our um, file that we want to pull that data into, being able to put that data into the next available row. So obviously that detail is going to be very beneficial if you've got data that's going to continue to grow and you want to add to the bottom of it. So obviously make sure you watch all the way through the video to pick up that more valuable information at the end there. So the first thing we need to just cover off we, um, we have looked at a previous video, but I've just got a file or folder um, that I've created, and in there I've put some sales data. So if we just open up the sales data file, you can just see what's in there. And it's literally just 10, well, 11 rows in total, but uh, 10 actual rows of data, and it's just some dummy sales data that I've put together. Uh, you'll see that I've color coordinated the countries that has real no bearing on the data at all. It's just going to help me explain some features of the copy and paste uh, as we go through this tutorial. So what we'll be doing, um, uh, again, while I've got this data on the screen, is obviously we'll be automatically opening this file as I've just done manually, copying out our desired data, excluding the headers, and then pasting it into our source file, so this sales report we have here on the right. So we'll close the sales data file and we'll jump straight into it. So the first thing we do is the most basic of options and that's literally just doing a basic copy of a defined range that we'll put in and obviously to a defined area. So for that we're going to do a subroutine and we'll call this one a basic um, copy underscore paste. And obviously I'll mention this again later on the video, but the sort of code that I'm using here, I will link uh, to a file where you can download that, or an Excel file to be more specific. Uh, so if you're having any problems when you're typing this in, you can obviously go and pick up that actual code that we're, we're looking at here today. So the first thing we need to do is open our workbook. So for us, it's going to be workbooks, workbooks, and dot open. And we just now need to enter in here the file path for that workbook. So the easiest way to do this is obviously to find your file or the folder that your file sits within. And for me, you can see it's just sitting here. So I'm just going to go into the, um, the navigation pane at the top here. And you can see we've now got the full uh, path for that file. Once it's highlighted, I'm just going to copy that out and then paste it into these two quotations. And then the last thing I need to do is if I just move my file over the side here so I can see, is I just need to do an, another backslash and then type in here sales data and making sure I get the correct file extension XLSX so that we've got the complete path to this file. So this tells our VBA code or this tells our Excel that we need to open this workbook and this is the file path for that workbook to open. So once we've now done that, the next part is fairly straightforward. We just now need to go workbooks and this is where we're now referencing the actual uh, file, the files we've got available to, or the sheets we've got available in that workbook, which is now opened. And we want to go open, so not open, sorry, sales data dot xlsx, so it knows what workbook we're referring to. So that's the one which is now opened. And we want to then go into uh, sheets, and we're going into the sales sheet. So within that file, you may have noticed that the, the sheet that the data was in was just the, uh, the sheet named sales. Now we can just go into dot range and let's do open here. So we can now define the exact range we want to copy. So for us, it's gonna just be quotations A2 to, to G11. So this is the specific range that we want to copy, dot copy. And then we're gonna do an underscore here 
um, and go underneath that code. So what the underscore means is just a continuation of our code. So we could write this just to the right hand side, but I'm just going to uh, actually rather than complicate it, what I'm going to do is well, I've got my copy there, and all I now need to do after this space is the location I wish in which I wish to paste that information. So for us, we can now use a, a new variable called this workbook. So what this allows us to do is rather than refer to our this file we currently have open of sales report, we can simply put this workbook and what will happen in the script is we'll say, okay, the code we're now typing is contained within a certain workbook. Therefore, that workbook is known as this workbook. So nice and simple one there and a new little one we can use. We're then going to do sheets open uh, total sales. I'll keep saying open, but it's not actually open. It's just obviously refer to total sales. And then we want to just go dot range and go that, that, that a two. Hit enter and you can see it's formatted for us. And the best way to do this is if I just type that one, the better way to do this, but when we work with copy range dot copy, once you do obviously a copy or range, the next part of that or the next variable we need to enter is the destination. So after the space, you don't need the brackets around it, but after hitting copy and doing space, you just need to put the, the destination path we want that data to go. And that's exactly what we've done here in a bit more detail. So this first part here is obviously the range copy that you have below. And then this next part here is the destination in which you want to paste that data. Once we've obviously pasted that data, the last thing we would like to do is just now save uh, or save and close this workbook that we just opened here called sales data. So all we need to do there is go workbooks and refer to this workbook in particular. So we've got sales data dot xlsx. So it's really crucial. You must always remember to get that correct file extension uh, when you're referring to it. Dot close. So again, another simple option we've available there. And the last thing we're going to do, another parameter we've got here is just going to do save changes. Uh, no changes are going to be getting made to the file because all we're doing is copying from it. But we'll just set that to true so that it just does a save when it closes. So this is the entirety of the code we need. And I could just expand this here just so you can see it ever so more. Um, so yeah, all we're doing is opening the workbook. We're then saying this is the static range we want to copy and this is the static range we want to paste to and obviously sales data close and save changes once we're finished. So let's just reduce this window down ever so slightly. So now if we run this code hitting F5, you wouldn't have seen that because it happened on another screen, but what happened is the file opened up on my other screen. It then obviously took this static range that we had here and it's pasted it into our Excel file. And obviously, alternatively afterwards, it's then just closed that workbook as well. So that's a tick, and that is our basic copy and paste method uh, completed. So the next option when it comes to copy and paste is doing pretty much the same as we've just done there, but this time actually pasting values. So the benefit of doing this is, as you saw in the last example, where we copied across all different, uh, the color formatting of each row, uh, this time we just want to copy across the raw value. So we don't want any of the cell formatting. So to do that is very much the same. And just going to cheat here, I'm just going to copy the very, this code we've got here first. So let's go copy. And this subroutine we'll call sub, um, uh, paste values, just so we know what we're referring to. And I can just paste that copied code into here. And we are going to just remove this first, or this middle line, da -da -da, like so, uh, because obviously the first line of opening the workbook and the closing of the workbook is going to remain exactly the same. It's only this bit in the middle that we need to change. So the first part we're going to do, and actually this part is going to be very much the same as well. But we'll just type it out again, again, just helps obviously repeating something helps make it become more familiar. So we need to go workbooks and refer to our uh, sales data dot xlsx. And we want to go to sheets uh, data, oh, spelled with a D, data uh, dot range. And we're going to go to uh, A2 and G11 once again. And once we've got that, we need to do copy. And then this time we can just go onto a new row. And let's, because our code is getting a bit bigger, let's start commenting what we're doing here. And in our previous videos, you might have seen us do this. If you're not familiar, it's really simple to add comments to our code. All we need to do is hit the, uh, I can't think what it's called, but it's on the same key as the app button. You just don't need to press shift. And that allows you to do this, uh, this icon here, this comment out, 
and we're able to then obviously it will put our text to green and this text we put in green won't be executed on our code so it'll be there as a comment you can see it on the screen but as far as the script uh, is concerned when it's running it won't uh, it won't cause any problems so the first part here is open source workbook and you'll see it'll turn green as I click away now the second part here is we're going to do um, okay so we are um, uh, selecting or copying, should I say, copying our source uh, sales data. And then the third part we need to do now here is okay, define define range, um, define destination, and paste values. Okay, so. For this one, again, it's going to look very similar to that last one. We're going to do workbooks, or no, we're not going to do workbooks. We're going to do this workbook. As we know, it's a lot easier, or not easier, but it's a simpler way to refer to where we want uh, this particular workbook we're working with. This workbook sheets, and it's called total sales. And we want to go into dot range. Oh, my spelling is gone all by yeah. Being able, navigating the keyboard has gone a bit uh, all over the place and we want to go to A2 again and this time we want to go dot paste special and again previous video you've probably seen us use paste special so this works exactly the same it's just obviously we, we're using it a bit more technical code should we say uh, paste special and the last part we need to then define what that paste special is so we paste colon equals excel paste values and when we hit enter, you can see that it's reformatted my text just so we know that it's actually accepted the information I've provided. And this last bit, as you know, is going to be a close and save uh, source workbook. Okay, so this time we can now run this code and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to hit F5. And there you go, you can see that it's now obviously pasted our data into this, uh, obviously into the destination file. The difference obviously with using the paste values is as you can see, none of the formatting in the cells have been copied over. So we haven't got any of the um, obviously highlighted cells here. I mean, yeah, highlighted cells or rows, should I be more specific. And you can even see with the formatting of the date and the sales total, obviously that hasn't pulled across that formatting either. So. Like I said, working with paste values has its uses, as does obviously copying or formatting as well. Uh, but this is just to show you another way of being able to do this uh, using the paste value method, should you so require it. This last option that we're going to look at is the more complex, and it's probably going to be the one that you will want to use the most, especially if you're working with uh, recurring reports where you might want to be pulling, um, let me say, monthly data into our total sales file over here, and you want it to gradually build each month. So obviously with each month, you want this list to gradually grow rather than just being replaced um, as we've looked in this previous two examples. Because obviously if you ran that code multiple times, it would keep overwriting the same um, data that you'd already pulled. Whereas this option is going to allow you to find the next available row and add onto that data. So we'll jump straight into the code. There's going to be a few more bits that we need to define and obviously reference as we go through this. So I'll try and go through it um, obviously as slowly as I can and obviously referencing each part as we go. But just to um, obviously remind you that you go into the links of this description or the description for this video below, you will find a link from which you can download this Excel file I'm using here. So obviously it'll give you everything you need to just copy the code uh, if you do get stuck along the way. So what we're going to do is get jump into it. So we go sub and we'll call this copy uh, sales underscore data and in we go. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to start defining these worksheets rather than just writing the code each time. So the first thing we need to do is go dim and we'll say dim worksheet copy. So just WS being short for worksheet. And we'll set to define this as a worksheet. So this is the file that we're going to copy from. Uh, we'll do destination now, so we'll call this one WS Dest, as in worksheet destination, and that's also as a worksheet. A worksheet. 
Uh, the next thing we need to do is we now need to find a couple of integers. So these are going to help us to define the row. It's so in this source file, if I brought it across, you can see it. So we know that there's 11 rows of data in our source file. So what we want this uh, first integer, due, integer, integer to do is to say, right, how many rows of data is there? So, okay, we can go down and say, right, there's 11. Or if this grew and we had an initial one or two pieces of information, we want it to then suddenly say, okay, well, we've now got... 13 pieces of information. So it will continually update for us. And on the contrary, obviously if there's less data, it would again, obviously it would identify that there was a lesser number of rows. So to do that, we first need to define these as integers. So we're gonna go dim and I'll call this one copy last row as integer. And the last one we need to do again is for the destination. So this time we want to go into our destination file and we want to identify what is the next available row. So for us, I mean, as we look at the moment, we can see there's information in row one, which is the headers. So we'd want our data to be pasted into row two. If, however, there was some information down into row six, and I've just copied country there, just gives me a basic example, we this time want to paste into row seven because obviously there's already some existing data here we don't want to replace. We want to go into row seven to obviously start um, collating that more information in addition to what we already have. So what we need to do here is go dim and we'll call this one dest last row. You can obviously call these whatever you want. Uh, these just seem the most logical as we're typing this out today. And let's start commenting as well with what we're doing to help re reference where we are in the code. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open the workbook to copy from. And in order to, order to do that, it's going to be exactly the same as what we've already looked at. So it's going to be workbooks.open. And in our quotations, we're going to put our file path, which I've just copied over to the side here. And uh, again, I can't stress, we need the importance of making sure you put the correct file extension here as well. Uh, and also one more thing to stress, because obviously mine, will, the code, if you source this file will be different, is you just need to make sure that you go into wherever the file is stored and you literally go into this navigational here and you literally just copy this exactly as it is, obviously adding the additional backslash with the file reference uh, at the end there. But obviously yours will be different to what mine is. So just make sure you make that update if you do copy and use this file. So I've got my sales data reference here. The next thing I then need to do after that is it's going to be to is define each workbook. And by that, I just mean we're going to set a, to give each workbook a variable to use rather than have to keep typing this out. So to do that, we're going to do set um, WS copy equals to workbooks. And it's going to be obviously sales data dot xlss xx sorry dot sheets and we want to pull from the sales data sheet within that workbook and you can see obviously it's done the formatting for us that's obviously always a great tick as i keep stressing to let you know that what you've input is correct and the second one we want to do is set ws dest equals this workbook and it's going to be dot sheets and it's going to be total sales. Ah, and you can see there's an error there because I did a zero rather than a closed brackets. So number three, this time we now need to define last row in source data. So we know how many rows or rows we want to source from this file. So this, we need to take this variable from the top here of copy last row. Let me copy and paste it there. So this is going to equal and it's going to be ws copy because now we've set this variable in this row above. We don't need to type all this information out. We literally just need this variable ws copy. ws copy dot cells. And we want to go to ws copy because we now need to refer back to that again to do our rows dot count. So that it will perform a count of how many rows were in that sheet. Once we've done that, we then need to just say, okay, well, we wanted to do that in row or column A, sorry, dot end Excel up. So once it goes to the end of that range or finds that last row in there, we want it to go up one row rather than going down right or left. 
And lastly, we're just gonna then confirm that we wanted to do it on the rows. If that is, uh, doesn't make too much sense to you just there, there is a dedicated video I've done on the channel, so you can check that out in our VBA playlist, what is also linked below this video, should you want a recap or to look at that in more detail. Once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is define the next or the row that we wish to paste this copy information to that is located in our, you know, our destination file. So for that, we're going to do number four, or the fourth thing we need to do here, is we're going to go um, define the next empty row in destination sheet. So for us, again, just to let you know, that would be, in this example here, it would be row number two, because that's the next empty row that we have. So for this, we're going to go dest last row, so destination last row equals it's going to be ws dest because again we don't need to do that again do we yeah, dot cells open brackets and then we've got ws dest again so we can we can do the count of the rows dot rows oh, dot rows dot count and again this is going to be in col in column a so the first column we have dot end excel up dot row so exactly the same as what we've done there but the problem, not the problem, but the, the point to mention here is at the moment with this piece of, or this line of code, it's gonna tell us row number one, because it's gonna, what it basically does is that rather than it says, what is the next empty row in here, it's literally just saying, go to the last row that has information in it. And for this example in, um, in our destination file, obviously that's going to be row number one. When it comes to our source data, that's great. We just want to go to the last row what's being obviously used in that file because that's as much data as we wish to pull. But when it comes to our destination, we don't want to paste into that last row. We actually want to go to the next one. So we just need to do a little addition here of plus one. So what happens is because we've defined this as an integer, this is going to return a number. So obviously it will return the number one. And by adding that plus one, obviously it's going to turn that off increment that result into an additional one value, so it will return the value of two. So it allows to paste into this row. So again, hopefully I've not made that more complicated than it needs to be. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, you don't need to know much more detail about how this works, other than this is the piece of code that you need to use to be able to perform this copy and paste. So last thing we need to do now, or not the last thing, but the next thing we need to do is go five. So we now want to obviously copy that information across. So we're going to go copy range and we're going to, yeah, so it's going to copy the range that we've selected here from our source file and it's going to go paste to destination. So this will probably look like a familiar piece of code to you as well. So we need to go ws copy dot range and this is where we define the range we wish to copy. So we know the first part is static, so it's always going to start in column A and it's going to start on row two because we don't want to copy the headers, we want to copy the first uh, piece of actual data from that range. And we want to go over to column G, but that is as far as we go with static information. The next thing we need to do is go and copy last row. So what this does is this copy last row, we know that variable is going to get picked up in this um, in this line of code here, so it's going to define what is the last row that has data in it, and it allows us to reference it here. So we know it's row 11, so it's in essence going to format this or change this to number 11 so that we have a range of A2 to G11. If obviously we had more data and we went up to row 15, it would automatically update this to us for A2 to G15, so we don't need to make any manual adjustments to that. All we then need to do is copy that range, so dot copy, hit space, and you can see it now asks us to provide the destination. So very simply, it's now ws dest dot range, and we want to do it into column A. And once again, we're going to do a little and symbol, and this time we're going to enter dest last row. So it's now going to provide us what is this next available row available in which we want to paste to. Close brackets. And that is the copy and paste now performed. The very last one here is we're going to literally just now again do uh, close source file and save. Oh, well, better way to word that is close and save source file so that we know what we're referring to here. Simply workbooks dot, oh no, sorry, workbooks, open brackets, sales data dot xlsx. 
close quotations, dot close. And then the last part here, we've got the saves changes. So we're going to click save changes and colon equals true. Hit enter. And that is now all of our code. So what's going to happen here is it's going to open our source workbook. It's then going to set our variables. So it will define this variable of WS code as that workbook we've just opened. And it's also going to do the same for this current workbook we want to paste to. The third part I was going to do is it will define what is the last row within our source file that has data in it. So we know how many rows we wish to copy. Our destination last row is then going to define to us in our destination sheet, what we have on the right here, what how many rows we are using, go to the next row so that we know we're going to be pasting always into the next empty row. The last one, well the last part, I keep calling it the last part, but point number five is then literally going to perform that copy for us. This did not, it's going to look at this dynamic range here based on how many rows we have in our source file and copy that range. And it's then going to paste that copied range into again another dynamic row based on how many rows we have of information in this sheet on the right. And then lastly, I always keep like saying lastly, it's then going to close that sales data file, what is our source file, and make sure any changes are saved. And as we touched on earlier, there are no changes that are going to be made to the file because all we're doing is copying the data out of it. So at least this way, it just makes sure the workbook does just save any changes that have not made. And that is the extent of the code. So what we can do now is just run this code. So I'm going to select within the sub and hit F5. And you can see it's now copied and pasted all that data across. And we've done a simple copy and paste. So you can see all the formatting has come across as well. If you don't want this, um, obviously, with all the formatting that we have here, obviously, you can refer back to this second one we looked at, the paste values, and ensure that you're doing your paste as this with the paste special. So that's an easy change to make should you wish to do so. And obviously, as we can obviously see that everything has come across as desired. The real benefit of doing this now is if I was to continuously run this book, so hit F5 again, you can see how it finds that next available row, what was row 12, and now continually adds the data or appends that data to the bottom of the existing data. If I do it one last time, so clicking in the subroutine, hit F5, you can see the new data is once again added to the bottom. So this is really, really beneficial, like I say, if you have a scenario where you're wanting to source new information that is in that file and always add it to the bottom of this file. So in future videos, we'll look at some more, it'll build upon this example to look at more uh, technical examples such as sourcing from different files, uh, well, to name just the one that comes to mind. Uh, so we'll look at more stuff like this, but hopefully this now gives you all some building blocks upon the previous videos we looked at to use some really beneficial code that you can start using and transforming the way that you use Excel. Uh, obviously, Excel being what it is, we're always copying data from other files or trying to merge files into one. And like I say, this is a real beneficial way of using Excel VBA to automate that potentially timely process. So this video was a bit longer than normal. Uh, I hope you've still managed to stay or stay interested, I guess is the keyword here, and make it to the end. If you have, please do give the video a like as it would be greatly appreciated by me as it does obviously take quite a bit of time to pull these bigger videos together and plan them out as well. But obviously if you give it a like, it would obviously also really help the YouTube algorithm to make sure that more people can find this video and learn the the techniques that were basically covered in it. If you the first time you've found the channel or you have watched previous videos of ours before and you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification button. Uh, it's also, um, like I say, it'd be really appreciated by me as it is very beneficial to the channel as well. And obviously by hitting that bell notification button, you'll be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. So last things, any questions, do drop me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And you've also got the links to this file that we've been using here in the description to this video as well. So you can go download that for yourself if you're having any troubles or you just want to obviously use it to follow along at home. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.